Okay, some random thoughts for today. We'll start with the dogs. Uh, we have a rescue hound who's quite old, that is Maggie, and we also have a newly rescued dog, which is Henry, who came to us just a few months ago. They are both unique in their ways and according to their breed and also just their personalities, and uh, as are we. But the irony and the funny thing that's been happening is, uh, and this has been happening for a long time with Maggie the Hound, my husband's a musician, and any time he goes to play an instrument, you know, the guitar, the banjo, the hammer dulcimer, or anything he wants to play, the Hound will start to howl, you know, the way Hounds do, you know, with the, oh, you know, that, that thing going on. Now, it's not exclusive to Tom doing it because it happens even if uh, there's a soundtrack on television and there's some slow guitar music, this hound will, within two notes, start the howling. So we thought that was sort of funny because this is something that you really enjoy doing. Uh, you know, it's, it's Tom made, made a living at doing it for years and years and years. And it's just so peculiar that the, the dog we would have would have this problem. And as some of you know, the newest dog that's come to us, Henry, his issue is the hairdryer. So I use a hairdryer to dry between layers when I'm doing my watercolor painting. And as far as Henry is concerned, a hairdryer is Satan. His foster parent, before he came here, uh, told me, because I called her when I first used the hairdryer and I thought that he was going to like have a, have a, um, a heart attack. I called her and I said, is there something about the hairdryer that he has a problem with? And she said, oh yes, that she uh, seldom used one and that uh, when she had, that Henry had been downstairs and when he heard the hairdryer came upstairs and tried to rip it out of her hand. Well, that's pretty dramatic, right? So I thought, well, this is a problem. So slowly, the, Henry's been getting used to the sounds that happen in this house, things that are, you know, nuts and bolts and creaks and just general sounds, letting him begin to know a sense of place, you know, how rooms are connected, how our property is managed, you, you know, where the fence, how far the fence goes, where he should and shouldn't go, you know, which are the public spaces, you know, so he doesn't go out into traffic, which would be virtually impossible around here. We're so far off the road. But the other thing is that there are certain things that we do in the house that are just functional and that we just do. So um, he gotten used to the, the dishwasher was not a problem. The, um, what do you call it, the clothes washer, not a problem. Um, slowly but surely, he has been desensitized and, and triggered at everything. And uh, I thought um, every time that he would go out on a walk with Tom, I would use the food processor. And I would do whatever food processing I need to do for the week when they would go off for this long walk. And this week I just wasn't in the mood. This week I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try it and see what happens, figuring that he would, you know, hit the roof. So I turned on the food processor and Henry looked at me and he went, woof. He was so disinterested. And I thought, that's weird. That's really fluky. And I continued to go ahead and use the processor for, you know, 15 minutes, not all together, but that, that, would, that would probably be okay. What he really hates is intermittent noises. He had no problem with that at all. So I went and painted yesterday. I'd taken a week off from painting because I was just feeling messy and not myself. And uh, I had a pretty good day yesterday and I tried the hairdryer. Crime against humanity, once again. So it is exclusively the hairdryer that Henry is focused on and that he cannot get accommodated to yet. And we think there's something ironic about that, that Tom has a dog <laughs> His, that he adopted that doesn't like what he does for a living making music and I have a dog now that doesn't like what I like to do which is painting and it just so happens the hairdryer is a part of that and he just can't stand it for one minute. And we just think there's something very ironic and funny about that. Uh, it's definitely something we're gonna have to deal with so it's not haha -ha funny because uh, you know if he barks at you the whole time that you're trying to work he doesn't bark the whole time the hair dryers well he barks the whole time the hair dryers on but then you know he's triggered then he, he can get into a spiral and then he's waiting for it to happen and so I use it as seldom as possible and I have spent sessions just walking in this room when he'll start to trigger knowing that the hair dryer might make an appearance even though it's been months uh, and then, you know, he, he'll, he'll bark the whole time that I'm trying to paint. 
And it's very difficult to get into your happy place when you have something barking at you all the time, even though I put a shade down over the glass door so we can't see what's happening. This will resolve itself. I know it will resolve itself. But in the meantime, we just prefer to think that it's kind of funny. Um, or it makes a good a story if you go to cocktail parties, which we don't do. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about today is this stuff. Um, you know, I seldom use white out, or white out is what you, we used to do for typewriters. What's it called? Masking fluid. I seldom use it because I'm klutzy with it and I don't like how it looks when you remove it because it looks like, you, you know, there's a gash or, or something. But um, I bought this and this works really well. The weird thing about this stuff, this Peebo, it's called Peebo draw, dr drawing gum, is that it does look gray on the paper. And I'm accustomed when I do use any kind of fluid like this, it's been white. And so I don't have to adjust my eyes to remember the whites of the paper. With this you do, but I use it so seldomly that, um, I, but I wanted you to know it really removes much better and easier than anything else that I've had and it's not gumming up as quickly and as the uh, other stuff does so that's my actual real watercolor recommendation for the day no irony on that one it's definitely better the other thing that has come up during this time that we've been sort of confined in our spaces has been uh, the concept of hate watching and if you you probably know what this is I talked to a good friend recently and she said she had no idea what hate watching was hate watching is when you watch a program which you have total disdain for which would be something like the housewives or 90 day fiance total disdain for the people on the program but for some reason i find it relaxing to watch not the housewives because they argue and stuff i don't watch them but i know um you know they've been around for a long time but this 90 day fiance thing i'm definitely hate watching i don't know why but it seems to relax me and there are other times when uh, and the other thing about it is i can't watch it it's like two hours long or something i can't watch anything for two hours so i sort of drift in and out so i'm always busy doing something else but it's background noise to um to what it, whatever i'm doing so um the concept of hate watching is um has has transformed itself into a certain amount of relaxation for me which i've shared before that sometimes if i'm really feeling stressed i will watch the um the home shopping channel which is a terrible thing to watch. I, I mean, there's no virtue in it at all, but for some reason it, it calms me down. I, I have no idea what that is. Um, but, so related to hate watching was I thought, okay, I should get really serious and, and improve my brain. So I'm taking an online film class with a neighbor who's an expert in film and owns a local theater and <laughs> So I have some good film recommendations for a change. And many of them are films that I once saw back, you know, 30 years ago. And now you can see them with new eyes. Some of them are ones that I had no idea about. And he talks about the history of the film and the filmmakers and all that. And I, I just always thought that films in general were just way too esoteric for me. You know, like I, I, my brain would be too small to understand these matters. But indeed, the way he presents things, I, I do understand them. And so I've been watching some of the, you know, list of movies that he suggests, of course. And then I thought, well, I'm going to get brave and I'm going to watch, um, start watching like from the top 10 movies that everyone must see sort of list, right? Big mistake. Big mistake for a sensitive like myself. So, <laughs> so one of the first movies I watched, which I thought would be really safe because it had a Scottish theme. Uh, I thought, here, so some of my BBC favorites were gonna be in it. Of course, they're much younger than they are now, but I thought this, this can't miss. How can a film about the Scottish coast and young love be anything but um, enjoyable? Well, the movie is called Breaking Waves. I, it flipped me out so badly, I should have stopped watching it. What I started doing was watching it like in 20 minute increments and then I sort of put it away and I think, no, don't, don't watch it. And then I went to Wikipedia so I could see what was gonna happen so that I wouldn't be shocked. Anyway, I persevered through this movie, which was in retrospect a mistake because after watching this movie, I had absolutely no parking space. Sometimes I think of my brain as parking spaces and you know, if they're full, there's no place for the car to park. I have no place to put this car. And so it was just circling the parking lot over and over and over again. And I just thought, this is terrible. This is, this is, uh, I never should have watched this thing because I can't let it go. I have no 
category to put it in. I have no safe place to store it. And, um, <laughs> and, so, and so I wrote the teacher, Rick Winston, uh, and I asked him, um, can you give me a clue about this movie and like why I am so disturbed? And he said, um, after owning the theater and showing this movie, both in its first run and also in, in rentals on DVDs, he said, oh yeah, he said, that has been one of the most disturbing movies that people have watched. And people either watch it and, and do think indeed it's, it's, it's brilliant because it's, it's wonderful movie making, wonderful filmmaking, but the subject is so deeply disturbing that he said some people would bring it, back, bring the uh, you know cassette or the DVD back and say, you know, I just can't, I just, I can't do it, I can't do it. And so that made me feel a lot better because when you are watching films all by yourself, you don't necessarily, uh, well, I, you know, there's no audience response, and and I've never, you know, to. Um, to react to and also I've never walked have I ever walked out of a film oh yeah I did that weird Goonies there was some weird movies I walked out on I just <laughs> and after that Tom said I'm never taking you to the movies again because I, I couldn't handle something which was really for children and um, it, and it terrified me in a weird way so anyway I just want to put a spoiler in for Breaking Waves probably a wonderful film you know, best 10 list film of all time and so deeply disturbing to this person that uh, I, I couldn't even put it in the hate watch category. You know, hate watching for me relaxes me. This, this is a completely different category of don't go there, don't ever go there. So that's where we are for today. I'm hoping to be able to paint something today. I have something all drawn out, but I wanna add a dog to my painting. And so I have to figure out exactly the shapes to use. And I'm trying to go slowly because really, what's the rush? So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. And if you have seen something that you hate watch, but enjoy, uh, let me know about it. And if there's a spoiler, if there's something that I should never see, give me a clue because I should have, I should have hit stop. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.